Hello, and welcome to the world of Infinite Santa 8000. I'm head animator Michael Neal. Today, we're going to talk about parenting. Parenting is what we use to put characters and objects together in After Effects, whether it's Santa fighting mutants or his reindeer flying through the sky. When we put characters together using parenting, we're making a digital puppet that can do almost anything. All right, welcome to this tutorial on parenting. First off, let's watch the clip. This is from the director's cut of the Infinite Santa film. Santa is sneaking around Dr. Shackleton's fortress. Shackleton is the villain in the movie, and Santa will fight an armor-plated skin bot. Give yourself up. Let's see what you've got! Ow! Ow! I'll show you not to screw with Santa! All right, so now I'd like to break down for you how we created a specific shot in this sequence. First, I'll play you the high-res QuickTime file. All right, now I'll play it for you in After Effects. Now this is a preview, and as usual, it's done at quarter resolution for system speed. So I'll preview it here, and you can see that it's writing everything right now. So here we go. Santa stands. Yep, two shots. Now you'll notice that there's more time in between each hit in this shot than in the final in the final scene. The reason we do that is because even though we plan everything with storyboards, we still leave extra time in between actions to help us edit. Because it can be tough in editing if you don't leave yourself extra room. So I'll quickly show you the layers we have here. First off we have lights. One, two, three. I won't go into specifics right now about what lights do. We'll save that for a future tutorial. Next up we have shape layers. These are the hits, the little dings that show up when Santa and the skin bot's weapon collide. This one and this one. Now shape layers are something that's made by After Effects and they're what they sound like. You can make them into stars, squares, circles, ovals, etc. I won't go into them here, but just know that that's what they do. Next up we have the staff poke pre-comp. This is the staff from the skin bot, and you'll notice that this is a pre-comp, which means that the action is actually done in a separate composition. I'll double click to bring it up. You can see here that the movement of the staff in and out happens here. Now, we do this because it helps to keep things separate, to have different animation in different compositions. There's a whole tutorial later on why we do this. And here is Santa, pre-comp C. He is also pre-comp. That means that all of his animation is done in here. And then at the bottom, we have the background elements, trash 4, trash 2, and the background wall. They're all parented to a null, which I'll show you at the very end. Now, before we go any further, as always, these are all 3D layers. This little box right here. We always, always, always do that. We can't do any lighting, and we can't do more complex movement unless we do 3D layers. All right, so I'll turn the lights off. It'll make things run a little faster. Okay, and I'm going to solo Santa Precomp C with the solo button here, like this. And now I'm going to hide everything else with the shy button. Now you notice that all of the layers are visible now and what I can do is hit command A, select all, and click any one of these shy icons and they all go away. Click down here to deselect everything and then just select the one for Santa. Go up here and click the little shy activation switch and there we go. So I'll show you just the little position keyframe animation we did. If you open it up, there's a position. Here are the keyframes. 
And if you watch, I'll preview, I'll set the work area with B here, and then N over here. And this little gray bar, the work area, is going to tell the computer exactly what to animate. Anything in between this point and this point. So let's preview. Yep, so he has little jumps with the position. Very simple. Now, as I mentioned, Santa is a pre-comp, which means that all of his animation happens in a separate composition. So let's look at it. Let's double click and bring it up. All right, here he is. This is Santa. Now, I'm going to go through the layers to show you how we put this together. Essentially, what we're making is a digital puppet. It helps to think of it like that. So the first thing you'll see is that there are lots of label colors here. If you click on this little box, it'll bring up all these different options for you. You can do purple, you can do brown, etc. In this case, we've done orange. And the reason we do this is because, especially with something like a body, it's good to keep all the related elements together. You'll notice that all of the right arm pieces are all orange, all the left arm pieces are yellow, the torso is purple, the head is brown, the legs are aqua. Now you'll also see that each time we click one of these, or even put our mouse over it, up in the composition window, you'll see a wireframe appear around it that also matches the color of the layer down here. The wireframe shows you a box that indicates the edges of your art in Photoshop. So sometimes the size will be a little bigger than what you actually see here if your Photoshop or source layer is bigger than just this little piece. I'll show you what that means in a second. But it's useful because when you click here and then you see the wireframe with the corresponding color up in the up in your composition window, it can help you keep track of which piece is which. So I'd just like to take a minute and show you how we organize our art in Photoshop before we even bring it in here. So I'll show you a trick. Go to any layer and do right click, reveal and finder. And this will bring up our source file, in this case Santa Straight Fighting 2. Double click. And this will open up in Photoshop. All right, and you'll notice that all these layers here correspond to the ones that we just looked at. Here's Santa's left arm top. If I turn it off, there it goes. I can scroll down. We have the top of his leg over here, his other leg, etc., etc. So we lay everything out here in different layers because then when we bring it into After Effects, we know that everything already lines up because we've done all the work in here. So now I'll quit Photoshop and I'll close the Finder window and back to After Effects. So we did very simple animation in this case with the two parts of his arm. If I hit R, it'll bring up the rotation for every layer. And if I scroll up and down, you can see that there are only two layers with keyframes, and it's I'll solo them, right arm top and right arm mid. And I'll preview the work area now so you can see what the movement actually is. See, pretty simple, arm up, arm down. OK, so now I'd like to show you how these two work together. So I'll hit R again to collapse all the rotation properties. Now the technique we use for this is called parenting. Parenting is what you use to attach a layer to another layer. The importance of this will become clear in a moment. Now, everything we have to do with parenting is in this column right here. Each layer has a drop-down menu to the right of it. And if you click it, it'll show you all of the layers in order, in the order they appear in your composition. And then it'll show you a dot right there next to the layer it is parented to or if it has no parenting at all, it'll just say none. I'm going to hit undo command Z to put it back where it's supposed to go. So in this case, we'll look at how the right arm is put together. So I'm going to solo all the pieces in the right arm and the morning star that Santa is holding. And I'm going to shy the other layers. So I'll select all of them and then shy. So the morning star here is parented to the right hand, one right hand. But you'll notice that if I move it, it just moves on its own. There's nothing attached to it. Now if we look at the right hand, which the morning star is parented to, 
we hit R to open up the rotation, you'll notice that when it moves, so does the morning star. Here, we'll turn off the other two parts of the arm so you can see it more clearly. you also notice that the anchor point is where everything rotates around. It's right here. And the anchor point is placed at the wrist, which makes sense. When we're parenting a body together, it helps to think of how a real body is put together just to understand how things work. Okay, now I'd like to show you what would happen if we decided to remove the parenting from the Morning Star. So I'll go to the parenting little menu and select none. Now when I rotate the wrist, the Morning Star is no longer attached. It breaks the illusion that he's holding the Morning Star. So now it's time to reattach the Morning Star here. Now I could do undo, command Z, or I could go back to the list here and select it again. Or what I could do is take this tool here called the Pick Whip, and this lets you drag a little line to whatever layer you want. In this case, the right hand. I'll put it back where it was. Or maybe I would put it on something else. You know, there's no right or wrong way to do this, but sometimes it's nice to have a visual way to connect things instead of looking through a menu here and choosing what you want to choose. So from here on out, I'm going to show you how the rest of the arm is put together. It might be helpful for you to do these movements on your own arm just to see how all the pieces fit. Going up the chain, we've shown that the morning star is parented to the right hand. If you look at the parenting drop-down menu, the right hand is attached to number four, right arm mid. So we'll go to number four, right arm mid right here, and we'll bring up R for rotation. And you'll see that now, when I move right arm mid, I'll turn off the top so you can really see it, everything moves together. The right arm does, right there, and so does the right hand and the morning star. You'll also notice that the anchor point for this is on the elbow. All right, so moving up the chain, we'll now look at what the right arm mid is parented to. Go to our menu, it's layer three, right arm top, which is right here. So we'll select it with a solo tool, and we will select the layer and hit R to bring up the rotation properties. And once again, if we move this, everything that's attached to it also moves. I'd like to take a minute and show you also that when we brought up one of these menus, you may have noticed that there are some choices that are grayed out, like this right here. And there's a reason for that. Right hand is grayed out because you can't parent something to itself. Morning star is grayed out because the morning star is parented to the right hand. You can't parent something to another layer that is already parented to it. It can only go in one direction. If you think about it, this kind of makes sense. Otherwise, you'd have objects that could move in all sorts of funny ways, and you'd really lose control of your animation. So to go back to the right arm top, I'm going to select all and collapse these. And then I'm going to hit the shy layer to expose the rest and deselect everything. So now we see all the pieces. And if we go to the drop down menu for the top, we see it's nine torso. And if we were to take the torso and grab it up here, you'll see that not only does the arm move with it, but everything moves with it. That's a way of keeping everything together. And whenever we make parenting puppets in this way, that's almost always how things work. So quickly, I'll show you the other body parts. We have the left arm. And one way I can select all the left arm, which is yellow, is to click here and do Select Label Group. You'll notice that they're all yellow. And I can hit the solo switch, and they all pop up at once. It's the same technique we used for the right arm. The left hand here is parented to the left arm middle. The left arm middle is parented to the left arm top. The left arm top is parented to the torso. Same with the legs. Leg top left is parented to the torso. Leg top right is parented to the torso. You'll notice that their anchor points are also where they would be on a real person on the hips. This sort of parenting lets us do any number of actions. In this case, we did something fairly simple. I'll just show you how we did that particular action. So I'm going to hit our shy once again. And we'll just look at the right arm. And I'll hit R to bring up rotation. And you'll see that we have keyframes set, as I mentioned before, for right arm top and right arm mid. And this is to get Santa to swing his morning star in a movement that looks fairly natural and smooth. Now you'll notice that 
the keyframes line up with each other. This one is the same as this. This one is the same as that. Now, we do a lot of fighting and a lot of precise movement. We found that usually when you line up keyframes in this manner, it makes things look more realistic. And I'll show you an example of how things might look if we switch them around. So let's say I took this keyframe and dragged it over here and took this keyframe here and dragged it over that way. Now let's extend our work area and preview and see what happens. Now this movement actually looks kind of cool, but it also looks a little robotic. You know, you'll notice here that, you know, this looks reasonably natural, but then when his arm starts to swing back, this swings and then that swings. And, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do this, but we found that for simplicity's sake, when you're doing a lot of movements in a row, like I said, this is pretty simple. We do stuff that involves a lot more. It's easiest just to keep everything simple in this manner. So I'm gonna hit undo, command Z, Command Z, Command Z, and get it back to the way it was. So there's one last thing I did to this movement, and I'll show you what it is. Up here, I did what's called a marker. You do this by pressing the asterisk button on your keyboard. Let me open up our movement again. Hit R. And the reason I did this is because I wanted to be able to tell in the other animation exactly where these movements happen. Let me show you why. So I'm going to close this, and we'll look at our main composition again, our animation. And let me preview here. You'll see that Santa jumps in a way that corresponds to him swinging. Now, these little markers here and here are the same ones that I made in the pre-comps. So this shows me where we animated the movement. Now, these little jumps, we did these because one thing we've learned is that Tiny little details in animation of this nature can really go a long way, especially if you're trying to do a lot of shots and you really have to make sure that you're able to move on from one to the other. I'm going to hit the shy switch now and show the rest of our layers. I'll collapse this here. Now you'll notice also, as I'll preview it for you, that these little jumps of Santa that we just looked at, these position keyframes, correspond with the background getting a little closer, which we did off this null. In the next tutorial, I'll show you exactly how that works, but I want you to notice that the keyframes here, the scale keyframes that make it get bigger, also correspond to the jumping of Santa. So once again, we're making sure that the keyframes work with each other from layer to layer to create the illusion. So just before we wrap up, I want to show you that there are other things that are parented here. Now the lights are parented to Santa, and I'm not going to get too into how those work, but you can see as I go through when Santa jumps, the lights go with him. And also, as I just discussed, these trash elements in the background wall are parented to the null here. You can see where they're parented on the menu here and you can see where the lights are parented to Santa here, and here, and here. You'll also notice that some of them are not parented. The shape layers here aren't parented to anything. They just move on their own with position properties. Hit P to show you. There they are. And so does this one. And likewise, the staff poke pre-comp from the skin bot isn't parented to anything, and neither is Santa pre-comp. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this. This was just a decision I made in this instance about what I thought would be the easiest to do. When you're doing your own parenting, you'll come up with questions like this, and inevitably you'll figure it out for yourself. All right, we just finished our first tutorial on parenting. Parenting is a critical skill to understand to create animation in After Effects. Examples of parenting will come up again and again in these tutorials. So long from the year 8000.